Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum. Straight talk about you and your money. Now from the BizTalk studios, here is Gary Kaltbaum. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. I'm Gary Kalp. I'm your host. Hey, thanks for being with us today. Glad you're here, ladies and gentlemen. Happy that you are listening. It's uh, July 5th. It's uh, a Friday, July 5th. And at 5.19 a.m. this morning, Reese Daniel Kaltbaum was born 20 inches, 7 pounds, 2 ounces. I am a grandfather for the first time. I don't feel like one, but I am. So it's a better day in the Casa de Calpam. And uh, I'm very depressed. I want you to feel for me because I have been very much under the weather. So when we found out that uh, my daughter-in-law was going into labor, my wife flew up. They would not let me fly up because you can't be around the baby when you are sick and under the weather. And you cannot be around any others when you are sick and under the weather because the others cannot see the baby. So I'm here stuck in Florida while what they're doing is sending me pictures and videos of Reese Daniel Kalbaum. And I can't see him but it's a big day here i am going to rest up relax take it easy get better uh and fly up midweek and uh i must tell you those that know me know that uh let's just say i cried a few times today it's pretty cool. And I actually slept through, I guess at 519, I'm getting all kinds of texts and FaceTimes. I slept through the whole thing. I woke up at 715. I looked at my phone. It said 112 messages, 112. And uh, that was that. So a new era. The amazing part about this is I still remember this show with my son, Aaron. And my son, Eric, where when they were young kids, we used to uh, give out prizes, cash prizes, to those that would call in and sing happy birthdays on their birthdays. And we used to get country western bands and boy bands. And uh, we had somebody that I I, got to tell you, I thought it was Aretha Franklin. And now my son is now a father. So, I don't drink, in case you don't know. I don't drink alcohol. And when I say that, this year, we are in July. I've had one, two, three, four, four drinks this year. And I think that's a, yeah, I'm beaten last year. That's how much I drink. But tonight... I may have to get a bottle of Dom. I'm by myself. Everybody left. And uh, knock a couple down. Anyway. Hope you had a great July 4th. Everybody left me. So I was by myself and Winston. And there were great fireworks outside our house. And my dog was shivering the whole time. He got very nervous. That was my evening. And then today. And that's that. So I hope you had a good July 4th. Uh, We're now in the weekend where I am going to be resting up. We have always lots to cover. In case you don't know, this is serious talk on everything that affects you. We do not screw around here. We are serious talk on the markets the economy, what the Morlocks in D.C. are doing to us, what's going on in the lion's sack of crap Biden administration, and much more. 
And if you do not get this radio show in your city, we'll post it at GaryK.com. We'll also post it on our Twitter feed, which is now X. And if you don't follow us on X, you probably should. And if you'd like to email us, all you got to do is be nice. And I say lion sack Biden administration because he's running the show right now. Simple as that. And I must tell you that he just did a 15-minute teleprompter uh, speech. I caught 11 lies in the 15 minutes, and I wasn't paying that much attention. So we're just sick and tired of this guy. Uh, Again, we have no bias. We're not a Republican. We're not Democrat. We just want somebody in there that believes in we the people. If Trump wins, we hope he changes from his last four years. And you know what I mean by that. Become presidential. We hope he stops spending like he did back then. Debt and deficits like he did back then. Right now, just so you know, you may not know this. The, And we're not a big believer in polls, but we have a good feel for things. He's beating Joe Biden handily right now. If the election was today, he would win Pennsylvania, Michigan, Georgia, Arizona, and that means it's party. That's it. You don't even need to go further than that. Which, let's get it out of the way. There are three words that are going to define whether this Marxist control freak in the White House stays in or goes out. He's doing everything possible outwardly when he gets out there to stay. I'm in. Nobody's moving me out. Nobody is shutting me out. But there are three words that matter a lot more than what anybody says, and that's follow the money. There have been some high-powered, big-dollar donors say they're not getting our money unless Joe Biden is out. If that starts to metastasize, notice the big word, he will have no choice. As of now, he's got a little choice. He's doing an interview with George Stephanopoulos tonight. That should just be stand-up comedy. George Stephanopoulos, in case you do not know, and I don't know how these guys become what they are, he was the main guy in protecting Clinton from the rape and sexual abuse and harassment accusations. He was the main guy that went was going after Monica Lewinsky and calling her a liar, making the whole thing up, you know, women first. He was the main guy running that whole thing. And how does he get penalized for that? Oh, he gets a job running a- ABC News. Don't you just love politics? Anyway, so he'll do an interview with Biden tonight. Hey, Joe, so do you like chocolate or vanilla ice cream? What are you watching on TV tonight? Oh, those are nice shoes you're wearing. That would be normally. But you know what's going on in the media now? In case you don't know, the media, you know, the corrupt media that follows each other and colludes with each other, they're all out to get Joe Biden now. The front covers of, of, of The Economist had like a, a walker on it. Showing Joe Biden, you know, representing Biden. Uh, A bunch of op-eds in the lefty rag newspapers against Joe Biden. So they're all against them. I don't think that moves the needle. Follow the money. Just letting you know. That's the story as we head into the rest of the summer. I will, I must tell you, Trump on the smart side recently. And trust me, he's not that smart. He's actually, he's opened his mouth a couple of times because he can't help himself. But mostly, 
He's just let things play out, and that's actually smart. Let the tigers eat their young. That's smart. Let things happen. That's smart. I must tell you, though, if I were Trump, I'd root for Biden to be able to stay in. Just letting you know. That's my take. We'll see how it plays out. Again, we cannot have four more years of open borders and massive debt and deficits and stupidity. You know what I think of Trump? No fan. But if he wins, we got a binary choice. The hope is low taxes, less regulations. Get the hell out of our way. Better chance with him than Biden. Up next, the markets. This is the one only investor's edge. Hi, I'm Gary Kalbaum, host of the nationally syndicated radio show Investor's Edge. We're not just handsome radio people. We manage investors' money for a living, specializing in fee-based discretionary money management. No big commissions, just a fee on the assets that's managed. We also provide a full range of personalized services, including retirement planning, fixed income, and educational needs, all to assist you in achieving your financial goals. Understanding not all individuals have the same needs, we'll carefully evaluate your personal goals to determine a proper investment strategy. If your current approach to investing is not getting you to where you would like to be, call us to make an appointment for a complimentary portfolio review. The number to call is 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. Investment advisory services offered through Kaltbaum Capital Management. It's time to switch on the integrator units and get the brain cells working. You're listening to... Hey, this promises to be fun. Investor's Edge. The last bastion of quality programming. With Gary Kaltbaum. It doesn't get better than this. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. Let me just repeat and we'll move on. The better chance of just getting the hell out of our way is Trump. Joe Biden is a Marxist control freak. Rules, regulations, fees, fines, mandates, taxes, giveaways. Control. At least we know with Trump, the regulations and taxes will stay moderate to lower, getting out of our way. As you know, we think tariffs suck. There is no way Trump's going to pull that. He's proposing these tariffs. He'll never do that because all hell would break loose. And I think he knows it. I think that's just the gaming. Just like the markets. Just so you know, last October 26th, the 10-year yield topped. October 27th, the stock market bottomed. Since October 26th of last year, the Fed has done nothing. So all the talk the Fed needs to do, needs to do that. Needs to do this, needs to do that, needs to do... No, just go away. As I have stated, we don't need a central bank. They don't do anything. Just damage. The damage they did with printing to $9 trillion, the distortions they created, the bubbles they created, the inflation they created, that inflation ain't going away. They don't get any blame because they're not elected. So there's no uh, nothing to gain by going after them. So you blame the administration. You got everything to gain by blaming an administration, elected officials. So just letting you know the market's been working. 10-year yield, we're talking bonds, on their own. If that changes, we'll let you know. 
Next, 1999. That was a year for, for the record books. In 1999, I believe it was around November. In fact, it was October 28th and then October 29th. The NASDAQ broke out of range at 2,924. It was drifting higher for the year before. It broke out at 2,924. We had already had major moves in internet and select few technology stocks. From 2,924 breakout, unbeknownst to all, we went from 2,924, this is the NASDAQ index, not a stock, 2,924 to 5,132 on March 10th. November, December, January, February, four months and change 70 some odd percent move in the nasdaq and as it moved up fewer and fewer stocks were doing the job how do i know i think i have spent 1000 man hours studying it About a thousand. What is that? About forty days total. And we are letting you know, under no uncertain terms, that we are not saying we're getting nineteen ninety nine. We are saying everything that's happened so far. Is acting like it and as we have stated to you narrow and narrow today the Dow was only up 67 Nasdaq 164 Nasdaq 100 205 with the NASDAQ up 164 and the NASDAQ 100, 205, the advanced declines on the NASDAQ, they were negative. Facebook up 30, breaks out. I don't know, two, three month range. Volume heavier. And no, we're not telling you to buy, sell, short, or cover. Yeah, let's call it, uh, let's see, the high was 524 on March 8th. The high was 531 on April 8th. Broke out of both today. Volume was 45% better than normal. Uh, Microsoft was up 7. By the way, these are mega caps. Apple up f almost 5. Apple. Breaks out a big base at 200. It's already 226, up 13% in five weeks. Amazon, new yearly high. The top seven stocks in size are 33% of the S&P now. What? Yeah. Do you know what they are, the NASDAQ 100? They're up to 47% of the NASDAQ 100. Narrow. Now, as you know, and we're very careful with our words, we just let the market take us. So guess what we only own? And it's been fruitful. But it's getting narrower by the day. You can now add Tesla as that woke up in the last week. Now, it's not just seven stocks. 
software's been better. In fact, the IGV finished at a new yearly high today. That's Microsoft and other names. We're just letting you know on a percentage basis. Now is all hell. We did a webcast today late in the day and sent it out to our peeps. Showing the oils. The transports. Rails, truckers, airlines. Auto dealers. Managed care, hospitals. A bunch of the retail, auto parts, building, construction, housing. What about them? That's next. But this is the one only Investor's Edge. America is talking. Investor's Edge. He's got to be pleased with that. The crowd is just on its feet here. He's a Cinderella boy. With Gary Kultbaum. Comes highly recommended. You're going to feel better if you talk to him. So, what are the oils? The auto dealers. Payroll companies. Managed care. Auto parts, a bunch of the retail, transports, rails, truckers, airlines, hospitals, housing, housing related, building, construction, machinery, industrials, mucho commodities, a bunch of the restaurants, Other sundry thing. Up oh, solars. They've been trying to tout you on solars forever. China. What do they have all in common? Part of the big list of areas and stocks that are in downtrends. While the NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100's trajectory are pulling a 1999 right now. And if anybody was in my office watching as I watch, you'll see it in real time how the money out and into. And as I watch on a daily basis, Fewer and fewer, less and less. Now, does that mean 1999 cometh? Nope. It means, though, it's certainly showing that way. But if the broad market can stop its ick and get going, would be a help. Oh, did I mention the mid-caps and the small-caps act like crap? It's the big-caps. It's the mega-caps doing the trick. But I will say this. Software has been playing catch-up. And a needed catch-up. What else do I got for you? We mentioned recently gold playing, starting to work. Coming up the right side, gold and silver now. We'll see how far that goes. Crypto. Well, we've had a thought process on crypto. Nothing to do. You can avoid right now. That's all we said. Why? The roadmap. Trading below. Moving averages. Worsened over the holiday. Uh, Down to, at the close today, the lows of May 1st, 
the IBIT, which represents the Bitcoin, has gone from 41 to 32.21. Let's call that eight dollars, eh, about 23 percent. Not the end of the world, but still down 23. I have noticed the Bitcoin tout artists lowering their tone a little bit, but it's no big deal. Everything's fine. Don't worry. All good. I'm still waiting for here to hear from these people. What's the reason for Bitcoin up or down? They can't tell me, except to say, well, they there's a certain amount of coins. What about earnings? Oh, there aren't any earnings. What about sales? Oh, there aren't any sales. Oh, okay. Thank you. So we're just letting you know. As always, we're not telling you to buy, sell, short, or cover, but we're going to tell you if it's in a bull or bearish phase. And the crypto is in a bearish phase right now of unknown time and price. If that changes, we'll let you know, but over the last few days, it has worsened. It has worsened. Next, we've been getting a lot of emails on our commentary on the Trump stock. And as we always say, and we, we have to, because we know how, you know, it is out there. Nothing we say about the stock is political. What we do here is protect capital as much as we can. And we warned you when it went to 79 bucks that this stock is not worth 10. And we didn't even have to give an opinion. 170 some odd million shares outstanding. At 10 bucks, it would be 1.7 billion market cap valuation with less than 4 million in sales. And sales have been going down year over year and they lose a ton of money. It's down to $29 now. People were thinking after the debate, it would skyrocket. It's done nothing but go down. So we're just letting you know. Sometimes you just got to take a little step back, get out of your own head, and ask yourself, would I buy a company for $1.7 billion that has $4 million in sales? Hell no. Now, there are companies that get bought for $1.7 billion with no sales. They're usually a biotech with a drug in trial. Not this. And they've shown no ability to grow the company either. So just letting you know. And full and fair disclosure to protect me. We did it on Beyond Meat. We did it on Rivian. We did it on Peloton. Uh, we did it on all kinds of asinine valuations in the marijuana stocks. So we have no bias. It's just that we get a ton of emails because uh, President Trump and I guess ex-president, still called president, is in the news every day and is the chalk now to be the next president for the next four years. He is the chalk. It's a long way to November. And you never know what's going to happen. The presidency is for Donald Trump to lose now. You never coast, but if I were him, less is more. But I'm not him. Anything else in the market that excites me? Well, as we mentioned, gold and silver may be emerging, but it's just kind of turning the corner. Software. And just that other stuff, it's narrow. Semiconductors, mega cap tech, the big seven. Not much else after that. There are things that are fine, the big banks, but they're not really, you know, what we call oomph. Big oomph. 
Now, I do know the new yearly high list picked up on the NYSE today. I've yet to look. I'm going to see what I can find. But as I do my own scans, wasn't finding that much. Just the names we have mentioned. And I gather a lot of the new highs today are going to be some of the indices ETFs. And you know what? As I look, yep, that's exactly what's showing up. Like the India fund, a bunch of S&P funds, and there's a bunch of those. On an individual name, Walmart, Taiwan Semi, Oracle. This is the New York Apple. Amazon, Reddit, New York Times at a new yearly high, Google. I can't wait to scan this sucker tonight. Costco. So I just want to repeat again, as narrow as narrow can be. Very concentrated. The concentration gets bigger by the day because the money keeps flowing that way. In the semis, a little mixed bag, but arm holdings, new high. AMD may have stopped going down. Up next, news of the day, whatever else today. I'm Gary. This is the one and only Investor's Edge. Listening to. What are we waiting for? Well, what are you waiting for? One, two, ready, go. Action! Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaugh. Welcome once again to Investor's Edge. It's uh, me, myself, and I this weekend with my dog, Winston. Oh, I'm looking at a video of my uh, grandson now. I'm going to cry. Let's pick a few things apart as we move forward. Just... Things to ponder, things to think about. As we tell you at the outset of the show, this is a show about you and everything that affects you. The markets, your money, your job, your industry. And we do that because imagine if you live in California. There have been several prominent restaurant chains that have announced the shutting of their doors because of the economic impact of what a government has done. By the way, today California raised the gas tax again, the highest in the nation. Affects you and your money and your job. Imagine if you are one of those franchisees who started at your fast food restaurant flipping burgers and then became assistant manager and then manager. And then you asked for one of the restaurants and they gave you one. And you were so successful, you ended up with 20 of them. And then the state comes in and says, up yours. You are paying your people, even if they're in high school, 40000 a year. 
amongst everything else you have to pay for. Drop dead. What do you do? Well, we tell you what the people were going to do. They were either going to raise prices, if they can, less man hours, less people, or enough's enough. Well, go read the stories in California of enough's enough. Affecting you, your money, your job, your industry. You do remember years ago them shutting down coal in places like West Virginia. People losing their jobs. Yet, they came and said, don't worry, we'll find you jobs. Oh, really? Government's going to find you jobs. Sure. That didn't happen. But what I would like to bring up here is something that I don't know why it just passes by, because it shouldn't. Part of Joe Biden's 15-minute teleprompter speech today was something he has been repeating often. And this is about you and your money. Without using four-letter words, he basically could have used four-letter words on tax cuts. Imagine whether it was Ronald Reagan or Donald Trump. Tax cuts. Imagine a president of the United States saying to you, each and every one of you, we know you're working hard. We want you to keep more of your money. We are lowering your taxes. Instead of you paying this, you're going to pay this less and maybe it's a thousand bucks but it's your thousand dollars maybe it's five thousand it's your five thousand dollars you earned it joe biden stood up there today with glee orgasmic glee we're getting rid of the trump tax cuts I just want you to think about it because as we start the show again, everything that affects you and your money and the markets and your job and your industry, that this man wants you to keep less of your hard-earned dollars. Just that in a nutshell. And is vociferous about it. While, by the way, spending us into oblivion. Thus, as we've said, the con. I just want you to think about that. Just that one thing. Because, again, we start the show and the things that affect you. No gray area here. You are not going to keep more of your money that the last guy gave you. Tough crap. You don't like it? Eat crap. But don't worry, he says, if you make 400000 or less, you're okay. Because that's the magic number. So if you make over 400000 you better make three ninety-five. Make less. Of course, that's the lie. In order to get rid of that hole, it all goes away. He'd have to come back with more tax cuts for people under 400. So we're just letting you know 
in real time. Things that affect you and your money and your life. Have a great weekend. Drive carefully. When you get home, do like we do. Celebrate. I'm a grandfather. And make sure you hug your children. Thanks for joining. Peace out. Be back Monday. Stay well, be well. Serenity now. Good night. This has been Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum on BizTalk. To listen to past episodes or to get in contact with Gary, go to GaryK.com. That's GaryK.com.